Hello everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be making a flint uh, gun here. Hopefully I'm allowed to say that here on YouTube. If not, I'll probably have to censor that part. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to be using a concept for this one. And this is a concept that I uh, paid a concept artist to make. So I think it's always great when you have a concept that you can use. Especially if it's one that you can use in the in Maya, in the um, side view, so you can set up as a reference image. So I'm going to be using pretty much that, the reference image to create the actual model. And uh, so the orthographic concept is, doesn't necessarily match the uh, perspective one perfectly. So some things are not going to fully match and, and that's usually how it goes when it comes to concept art and having different perspective images, stuff like that. Not everything is always going to match. Uh, but I'm going to use a lot of the uh, Quadra tool in this case, just to kind of trace the concept and get the uh, model uh, out that way. I find that especially when you have a 2D image, using the Quadra tool in my eyes, it's super awesome to just kind of get those shapes out relatively quickly. Uh, that's pretty much how I always make models when there's a concept art, especially an orthographic one. I use the Quadra tool to trace the concept and get the model out of the, out of the concept that way. Like I said, I, I always find that to be super useful. So I was super happy when they finally introduced that tool. I think it was back in Maya 2014, if I remember correctly. The one thing I do miss is that in previous versions of Maya you could actually activate you could actually activate the uh, Quadra tool without having to have another object in the scene. So in the current version you actually have to create uh, some kind of geometry. You need to have some geometry uh, visible in the scene in order to activate the Quadra tool. And in previous versions, you didn't actually have to do that. You could just start uh, using the Quadra tool. So I'm not sure why they decided to do that. I think the reason they did that is because it's mostly used for retopology. And so it makes sense to have an object in the scene to activate it so that you can actually start to retopologize it. But uh, I mostly use it this way. Uh, when I have concept arts, I just trace the image. I just find this to be a really good way to do things. So that's mostly what I'm doing. And everything else is mostly just uh, standard uh, modeling with the uh, primitives. And the model itself is not really too complicated. Uh, there are a lot of uh, relatively simple shapes. I did have to speed up this video a little bit more than usual because uh, I think it took almost two hours to get this one done. So that's why there's uh, the speed is a little bit more than usually is. So one thing I did do was I bullied the uh, the case with the actual barrel, and if you noticed, some of the geometry just kind of got a little bit messed up. That's one of the things that happens when you use bullions is that. Sometimes, at least every time I use it, there's usually an issue uh, with some geometry sometimes disappearing or vertices not really connecting to each other. And uh, a little bit later on in this video, you're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of an issue when I do the UVs on that part, uh, just because some of the geometry didn't fully um, weld together. So that's usually something that happens when you boolean things, is that you'll notice that sometimes there's some geometry, like in this case I'm deleting some geometry inside that I didn't notice before. And that usually happens when you boolean, you have to be super careful and double check that there is no weird overlapping geometry or extra faces that shouldn't be there. So that's my advice when using booleans. But, uh, if you, know, if you know what to look for, you can pretty much use it safely. 
And uh, like I said, you're going to have to clean up a little bit when boolean when you use boolean operations. And for UVs, I'm going to use mainly planar maps and uh, using the unfold tool. And a few pieces I want to be symmetrical, so I'm just going to uh, UV half and then just mirror to the other side. So I'm here, I'm just going to mirror things. And the reason I'm doing that is because I save UV space, because UVs are overlapping now. I always get that question uh, as to why I am only UV in half of the model. The reason for that is because you get more resolution when you have when you're using less UV space. So in this case, I want the model to be symmetrical also, and so that's why I'm doing that. And here I'm just going to add bevels and support in geometry for the high poly model. And I'm also going to turn it into uh, well, I'm going to preview it by uh, turning on sub D just to see what it looks like once you subdivide it in ZBrush. And I will take this to ZBrush just to clean it up a little bit, uh, but this is going to be mostly a clean model, so there's not going to be a lot that I'm going to do in ZBrush. I'm just going to take it there just to clean up a few things. But sometimes I do like to just add supporting geometry and bevels in Maya and export that as the high poly model. And then in ZBrush I'm just going to divide it mostly and then clean up a few things. I think the main reason I took it to ZBrush was to add this detail on the back of the handle. Obviously this could be added by uh, modeling it in Maya. But in this case I just thought it was uh, easier to just do here in ZBrush. And sometimes it's actually more fun as well just to kind of sculpt a little bit and paint things. And for the handle, the concept it's actually wood. Uh, but in this case, I decided I'm going to change that. And instead of that being wood, I'm going to use like more like a plastic look. Mainly because I want to experiment with some of the colors. Uh, and then everything else I'm just mostly going to divide so that it's soft and just add a little bit of variance to the to edges by using the trim dynamic tool but not much. I'm also going to group a few things here and I'm going to use a tool which allows you to apply different colors. And uh, this is going to be for uh, baking a material ID in Substance Painter. So if you're interested in that tool, there's also a link in the video description. It is an affiliate tool, by the way, but I use it a lot. I've been using it mostly for the naming but it's really useful for things like uh, ID maps as well. So that's what I used it for here. But a few things I did have to mask by hand. Uh, you could also do that with an ID map as well, but in this case, I don't mind too much. And here, instead of using wood for the handle, I decided to make that more into a plastic type look, mainly because I, I kind of thought the um, for a stylized look, I, I was thinking that a plastic would look more stylized than using wood. I mean, it's not necessarily the case, but I just thought it looked kind of cool to do that. And I also wanted to experiment well, with different colors as well. In this case, I went with an orange color. And I did paint a few things by hand. So Substance Painter is good for procedural painting. And that's usually what most people use it for. Uh, but painting stuff by hand is uh, you know, it's perfectly fine as well. Obviously it's not so great if you have to make changes to the model. But uh, for the most part it works really well. Uh, but anyway, here is the final render in Marmoset Toolback. So, if you like the video, as always, make sure you hit the like button. If you are new, hit the sub. And hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Would you like to learn how to transform this cube into something cool, like a character or this room? I recently put together an intro to 3D modeling course 
which shows you all the steps needed to do just that. This is a very short video so I don't have enough time to cover everything, so click the link below now to get more details. Just want to let you know this course is for total beginners, so you don't need any prior experience. I cover all the steps from getting started with the software to creating cool props. Like I said earlier, this is a short video so click the link below now to get more info about the course and get started today.